Welcome to From the Workbench, everyone. This is Matt Douglas from House of Vacuums in beautiful Lynchburg, Virginia. And uh, today I've got a Eureka Pet Pal. Interesting model. Um, Uber, Uber, cheapy McCheap upright. So Eureka, unlike in the past, has turned into an ultra, ultra budget machine. Um, there's really nothing that they make that I think is even worth talking about. Um, these are just, I mean, the, the basic bones of this machine, even though this is fairly, a fairly new machine. Is this in focus? Yes. Oh my God. Even though this is a fairly new machine, um, the, uh, <laughs> it's, the basic guts of this machine have to be at least 10 years old. And Eureka has gone through a ton of changes. They used to be owned by Electrolux. Electrolux kind of forsook them uh, and let them kind of decline in market share and design and R&D and then sold it to Medea. I think it's Medea uh, that they got sold to, uh, which is a Chinese um, a Chinese uh, appliance manufacturer. They do a lot of uh, air conditioning and dehumidifiers, but they are now owned by Medea, I'm almost 100% sure. So what are we doing to this thing? Oh, so what the customer wants is they want the filters cleaned. So this should have two filters in it. One is right here. As you can see, it's a uh, a little bit, little bit roached out. So um, that definitely could use a clean. Um, rinse off using warm water if necessary. Dry for 12 hours. So we may need to do that. And if we flip this over, where's the exhaust filter? Honestly, this may not even have an exhaust filter. You know what? I don't think it does. Yeah, it doesn't because this is actually these these holes right here. Right here. Those are the exhaust ports. So, um, so this does not even have final filtration that's straight into the motor right there so um <laughs> so not a great filtering machine uh because you've got your cup filter which deals with a ton of really big stuff this is a super super old school design like i, I can't even like convey to you how bad this design is um because so you've got the cup you've got the filter when bagless machines first came out, um, they basically just had a cup and it dumped, everything dumped in there and then all the air went through a filter. That was a horrible design because you had one gigantic filter with no other cyclonic filtration to try to, you know, try to spin the dust out of the air prior to entering, the, um, entering into the filter. So these clog up so fast. You saw how roached out that was. And that is not uncommon because this is the only step between the cup and your your motor. There is no like true cyclonic action. Whereas newer machines, newer bagless machines, even though I've got my issues with them, um, they're much better designed. So all that to say, this is um, you know sharks use a single cyclone, mulas use a single cyclone in their bagless machines still gets a lot of the dust out of the air. Um, Dyson uses multiple cyclones, which uh, in terms of filtration definitely works better. In terms of ultimate performance, it's not that great, but um, all of them, all of them blow this away. This is like, this is like bagless systems circa like 2002 or even earlier. Um, this is, this is very, very rudimentary and within, I would say within a couple of vacuumings, you may be pulling um, three quarters to half 
of the uh, air volume that you were when this filter was brand new. I mean, it happens super, super fast, almost to the point where you should really clean this filter every single time you use the machine. Um, so, so just incredible to me that there's still a company out there doing this. This is meant to deal with everything, not only separating the dirt from the air before it enters the motor, but also it's your only filter in the entire machine. So every, if something gets through this, like very, very fine allergens, there is no HEPA filter in place to ensure that that doesn't exit back out into your home. So just by any measure, this is a um, antiquated and, uh, and really poorly poor uh, performing machine like, like i can't even really put into words just how shocking it is that they still make this machine and that this this is still happening in 2019 i mean it's just it's just absolutely ridiculous all right so i'll get off my uh my rant i'm gonna wash this out and then i will uh, yeah so that's all we're really gonna do we're just gonna wash this out So if I put my finger here on the motor shaft and hold it, I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't be able to um, still turn the, the brush roller or the belt. And you can see here that my thumb's on the motor shaft and it's still turning, no pro uh, the belt is still turning. So there's not enough tension on this belt to keep the brush roll from slipping. So. So this is the replacement belt. This is the correct belt. And you can see number one, that the old belt is narrower. And the reason being is that it is stretched out. Um, you can see how much uh, that, that new belt sticks out versus the old belt. And then you can see the difference in size as well. So if you look at the sizing here, um, you can see pretty easily that um, the old belt was just a little stretched. The new one is the correct belt. Um, and this is why it was slipping, why it was starting to uh, get hot and starting to gloss over that belt. So I just put the cup on here so that I can set the vacuum to the side. I'll wait until tomorrow and uh, when the filter dries and go ahead and pop that back in and let the customer know that it's done. So in any case, this has been another episode of From the Workbench. Thanks for joining me. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below or visit us at thehouseofvax.com. If you like this video and you learned something, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to, uh, you know, want to follow along for more vacuum content feel free to subscribe to our channel we'd love for you to do that that way we can see you next time thank you appreciate it